Welcome to a video to help you prepare for the AP Stats exam. This video is going to talk to you about how to smash probability with sampling distributions. Now, sampling distributions are their own beast, but oftentimes questions about sampling distributions pertain to probability, and that's what we're going to tackle in this video. All right, so sampling distributions for a sample mean or a sample proportion follow a normal distribution as long as all conditions are met. I'm going to briefly talk about those conditions in this video, but again, this, prob this video is more about the probability. Now, when you know that you follow a normal distribution, this makes it very easy to find probabilities with sampling distributions. Again, as long as you follow the normal distribution, which, as long as the rules are met, sampling distributions for both means and proportions will follow. Now, within a normal distribution, you need a mean and you need a standard deviation. And guess what? All sampling distributions have a mean and they have a standard deviation. Now let's look at those formulas real quickly here. So when you're making a sampling distribution for a sample mean, which basically says, hey, listen, there's a mean of a sample, but how many samples are out there? Oh my gosh, I mean, when it comes to large populations, there's many, 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 many samples. So first we talk about the mean of all those samples. This is literally the mu of all those samples. The mean of all the means. Well, the mean of all the means should be the true mean right smack dab in the middle. So the center of your sampling distribution should be the mean of your population. Now, the fact is this, samples vary. So what's the standard deviation for all of those sample means? Well, you take the standard deviation of your population and you divide by the square root of your sample size. It's really that simple. Now that's the mean and the standard deviation. What about the shape? Well, normal. Now, the only way we're gonna meet this normal models if we have samples that are random, samples that are under 10% of the population so we can assume independence, and we have to make sure that our sample size is, well, a couple different things here. 30 or larger means that your sampling distribution will automatically be normal when you're working with means. You are allowed to have a sample size under 30 as long as your population is known to be normal. All right. Now, you can also make sample distributions for a sample proportion, right? Maybe you get a sample and you find out that 13% of people in that sample have blue eyes. Well, that's just one sample proportion in a sea of many, 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 many. So once again, we talk about the center of the sampling distribution. What is the mean of all possible sample proportions? Well, that should be the true proportion of people that have blue eyes. That's exactly what should be smack dab in the middle. But we understand, again, that proportions are going to vary. So what is the standard deviation of all those sampling or all the, of all those sample proportions? Well, it's also a pretty simple formula. You take the, popular, or the population proportion P times 1 minus P, all divided by your sample size, and you put that inside of a giant square root. Now, the thing I want to show you is that all of these formulas are given to you on the AP Stats formula sheet. There's actually two sections, one for means and one for proportions. So here's the section that deals with proportions. So you'll see here across this top row the two formulas that I've already given you, and then it also talks here about standard error. Now standard error is what you use instead of standard deviation when you don't know the true sample proportion, or excuse me, you don't know the true population proportion p, all you know is your sample proportion p hat. So you'll see the only difference is replacing the p right here with the sample proportion p hat. That's used for inference procedures like confidence intervals and tests. All right, we also look at the difference between two sample proportions. Once again, we have a mean and we have a standard deviation for all of that as well. Then there's a second page here, or a second set of formulas here for means. Once again, you'll see the two formulas I already gave you for the mean and the standard deviation of a sampling distribution, as well as the standard error. Once again, the only difference here is if you don't know the standard deviation of the population, and you have to use the standard deviation of your sample, that's where we have to call it standard error instead of standard deviation. And once again, we also have the mean and standard deviation if we're working with two samples and looking at the difference. Again, all of these formulas I copied directly off of the formula sheet from the AP Statistics. So again, what this video is going to be about is how we can actually use this information to calculate some really, really, really simple probabilities. So here we go. Let's take a look at beetles. The distribution of weights of a certain species of beetle follows a normal distribution with a mean of 18 grams and a standard deviation <coughs> excuse me, of 2.5 grams. 
what is the probability that a sample of 42 beetles of this species has a sample mean greater than 22 grams? The most important thing here is I'm not looking at a single beetle, I'm looking at a sample of 42 beetles. And we all know that there is many possible samples of 42 beetles. There's probably hundreds of thousands, if not millions of beetles out there. I'm only going to look at a sample of 42. But what my sample shows could be different from another sample, from another sample, from another sample. And that's the idea of a sampling distribution is that there's many, 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 many possible samples out there. And we would say, well, what's the mean of all those possible sample means? Well, as we talked about earlier with our formulas, it should be 18. Yes, some samples could come back more than that, and some samples can certainly come back less than that, but the mean should be the truth of 18. What about the standard deviation of the sampling distribution? Once again, we're going to take the standard deviation of the population and divide it by the square root of our sample size. Again, that is the formula that I was giving you earlier. Finally, the shape of this distribution should be normal. Again, my sample size is larger than 30, and the central limit theorem tells me that as long as you're larger than 30, the sampling distribution for a sample mean will be normal. And that's actually the most important thing because that's what's going to make this problem so easy to find. So all I have to figure out is the probability that a mean of 42 beetles is greater than 22 grams. Now to do this, I'm going to need a z-score because my calculator, when it comes to the normal model, only speaks the language of z-scores. So I already have my mean. All I got to do is quickly calculate my standard deviation. So let me pull up a calculator here. I'm going to take 2.5 divided by the square root of 42 and I'm going to get the standard deviation for my sampling distribution. Now just so this makes sense, one beetle could easily deviate a lot. That's why the standard deviation for a single beetle is 2.5 in the population. But a sample of 42 beetles should be much closer to the truth because in a sample of 42 beetles, they're going to kind of average each other out and hopefully be much closer to, this, to the truth, which is why the standard deviation is so much smaller for a sample of 42 beetles, 0.386. All right, so here I go. To find the probability that a sample mean comes back greater than 22, first thing I need is a z-score for 22. I'm going to subtract the mean of 18. That was my parameter that I believed to be true, divided by my standard deviation of my sample proportion, 0.386. Going to need a calculator to do that as well, 22 minus 18. Always do that math first, hit enter, then divide that by 0.386, and I get 10.363. Holy crap. So essentially, I'm trying to find the probability that a z-score is greater than 10.363. And if you know anything about z-scores, this is going to be darn near impossible because that's really, really weird. Now, granted, it might be very common for one single beetle to be 22 grams or more, but for a sample of 42 beetles, Again, 42 beetles, most of them are going to be right around 18. Yeah, you might get a couple heavy ones or a couple light ones, but the average should be much closer, which is why a sample of 22 or a sample of 42 beetles coming in at 22 grams on average would be very unusual. Now, to calculate the actual probability, I'm going to go ahead and use normal CDF. This is my main probability command when it comes to anything that's normal. I'm going to start at my z-score of 10 point, uh, I forget what it was already, 363. And then I'm going to go all the way up to 99. 99 is essentially acting as my infinity, really, really, really high z-score. And I'm going to go ahead and paste this in and get my answer. And again, look at that probability. It's basically zero. It's 0 0.24 zeros and then a 186. So, you know, honestly, for, for lack of writing all those zeros out, I'm just going to say the probability is pretty darn close to zero, right? This would be very, very unusual to happen. And this actually could be brought in with inference if I said, okay, what is, the, what is you know, if this did happen, if I did get a sample of 42 beetles that was 22 grams, I would be absolutely shocked. In fact, I would really start to question, was it a random sample? Or maybe the mean of 18 that I was told from the very beginning is completely wrong, because that would be very, very surprising. All right, let's look at how we could do this exact same problem, but this time working with proportions. So here we have 22% of sea lions have a deadly disease. In a sample of 80 sea lions, what is the probability that less than 12 are infected with the disease? All right, now first thing I want to figure out is what sample proportion that would be. 12 out of 80. Grab my calculator real quick. 12 divided by 80 would be 15%. All right, so 22% are supposed to be infected. My sample showing 15%. We want to find the probability that's anything less than that. So we're trying to find the probability that a sample proportion of 80 sea lions is less than 15%, which again is 12 out of 80. 
Now, you might say, well, this kind of sounds like a binomial distribution. And in fact, this actually could be calculated as a binomial distribution problem. But the binomial distribution is allowed to be morphed into the normal model as long as a couple conditions are met, primarily the fact that I need to have 10 or more successes within my, within my sample. So as long as I have 80 sea lions, and again, 22% of them are super supposed to be infected as long as I have more than 10 of those successfully infected sea lions. And again, if I take the 80, whoop, I multiplied that wrong, by the way, it's 0.22, an extra two there. I'm so sorry. There we go. And then again, as long as the failures are also more than 10, so that I did it again, didn't I? What the heck? It must be this um, button I'm using. There we go. Okay. And then same thing with failures. The failures would be the 78% that are failing to be infected. <laughs> that doesn't make sense, but you get my point. So again, as long as both of those numbers are larger than 10, we actually can use the normal model here. So the first thing we say is, okay, this is just one sample. Remember, there's many possible samples of ADC lines out there. I'm just looking at one. So let's talk about the sampling distribution. What would the mean of all possible sample proportions be? Well, it should be the 22% in the middle. Like that, that's what's true. 22% are infected. Like That's what I should get. Certainly, samples could be more or less, but the mean of them all should be the truth. What about the standard deviation? Well, that's what we're going to use that formula that I showed you earlier. Giant square root P, 0.22, times the opposite of P, simply 1 minus P. That would be the, the probability that this does not happen, which would be 0.78, all divided by my sample size of 80. Definitely going to need a calculator for that. I'm pretty good at math, but I'm not that good to do that in my head. So 0.22, I keep doing that with that extra 2 there, times 0.78 divided by 80, all inside the square root. So I get a standard deviation of 0.0463. All right, so now if I'm going to find the probability that I get a sample less than 12 out of 80, which is, again, 15%, make sure you understand how I got that, because sample proportions deal with proportions, not how many. So I don't want the 12. I want the 15% that 12 out of 80 represents. So that would be the probability of a z-score. But wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the z-score? Okay, let me get my z-score. I'm looking at 15% minus the parameter of 22%, all divided by the standard deviation of 0 0.0463. Grab my calculator to do that math. 0 0.15 minus 0 0.22. And I did it again. I don't know why it keeps doing that. And I'm going to go ahead and divide that by 0 0.0463. And I get a z-score of negative 1.512. All right, so by asking you to find the probability that a sample proportion is less than 15%, 12 out of 80, that's the same thing as the z-score less than negative 1.512 within this specific sampling distribution. And now that I understand I could use my normal model, now that I got a z-score because this all falls in normal distribution, all I got to do is go to my favorite command on my calculator for AP stats. That is normal CDF. I do want to look below, so I'm going to start at negative 99. Again, this command does work left to right, so I'm going to start at the lower value of negative 99. That's my negative infinity. And I'm going to go up to negative 1.512 and go ahead and paste that in, hit enter, and I get 0 0.0653. So there is about a 6.5% chance that I collect a sample of ADC lines at random and under 12 of them, under 15% of them, have this infectious, deadly disease. Now, would, it be, would I be surprised if that happened? No, I don't think that 6% is extremely low by any means. It's not completely unlikely. Like the previous problem, where the probability was basically zero, that would definitely be surprising. But in this problem, not so much. But again, look how I simply built the sampling distribution using the appropriate formulas that are given to you on the formula sheet. And once you understand that it's normal, once you have your mean and your standard deviation, then finding z-scores is very, very easy. Using normal CDF is very, very easy to calculate probabilities. So hopefully you've learned a little bit in this video that's going to help you smash any problem on the AP Stats exam that deals with sampling distributions and probability.